lot better. There we go. That's a proper Venturi burner. Now, be careful, it's gonna be hot. Just burnt the shit out of my hand. No, I'm joking. We only got nine parts. So start assembly. This is the basic of the body. Body, one end goes into the forge, one end sticks out of the forge. Don't want to kill it, but we want to get it nice and tight. Wraps around itself and tightens more. I put it in. And now we'll be ready to attach the, the gas line. We're gonna make something cool today, which is hot, actually. We're gonna be making a forge burner. Warning, if you don't know what the hell you're doing with making forges or forge burners, have someone else make it for you or just buy an already pre-made forge burner. Out of nine plumbing parts, first let's show you the parts. You're gonna need the eight inch nipple, three quarter inch diameter. You're gonna need two, three quarter inch to inch and a quarter flare reducers. One cap for the inch and a quarter reducer. This is for the end of the burner. Gonna need two of these 3 ace FPT unions. Gonna need one 3 ace gas ball valve. Gonna need one 3 ace FPT swivel joint and one gas orifice jet. He's got a small opening. This will fit right into here. And this will be threaded to the nut cap. All right guys, so the tools you're gonna need, gonna need a hacksaw, drill, and some drill bits. I have a drill press, so I'm gonna use that because it's more precise. You're gonna need some gas tape. You're gonna need an adjustable wrench or two to properly tighten the joints. You're also gonna need a center punch to help you mark the hole in the nut cap so your drill bit doesn't wander. You're also gonna need tape, whether it's painter's tape or duct tape, to wrap the threads of your inch and a quarter nut cap. You're also gonna need a vise, preferably a healthy one. Save some duct tape tape. Then you can use the side of the square nut to line up your hacksaw. You can start your cut. You could use you could use an angle grinder if you wanted to, but this way you get a cleaner result and you don't cause any burrs on the threads. It'll be easier to thread this in. had that happen to me before. I didn't quite have it close enough to that edge, but that's fine. So I'll be able to use a file. Now we're just gonna flip it around and go to the other side. Might have better luck this time. And I'm gonna angle the saw a little bit so that maybe this time we'll be able to actually cut through everything. See, that's what it should have been. See how it went all the way through and you got that gap? That was supposed to be on the other side, but we're just gonna have to take a file that. This is where going to flea markets and getting good old school files for cheap, even if the handle's a little bit damaged, this'll help out. Yes, you can use your belt grinder and I got one, but I'm gonna show. All that matters is that we got this all cleaned up. Doesn't have to be perfect, we're just gonna try to line it up. So now we got that. Threads aren't messed up, like we did our best to protect them. You're gonna wanna make sure you reverse until you hear it click. And we're just gonna thread this in as far as we can by hand, and then we're gonna back off. Now we're gonna take your calipers. Instead of measuring your wiener, we're gonna measure the nut cap and find the center point. Take your calipers, gonna measure each side. Nine, seven, nine, eight, half of 90 is 45. Then go to 49, gonna tighten that. If you don't have marking fluid, you can just take your marker and we'll use the side to get more coverage. 
Now these do have a cast, these are casted mild steel. They do have here, but trying to get a, trying to get a drill bit in there and centered is not gonna be easy. So it's better to go from the top. So after you get that mark, we wanna go from both sides because that'll give us a better reading. Now it's gonna be hard to see, but we do have a rough center point where the lines intersect. Now I have made these before and the nozzles weren't exactly in the center, but getting as close as you can to the center will help. Got some skill. These spring loaded center punches are awesome. I'll leave a link in the description. These things help save time. You got as close to the center as we can. So now we're gonna take it to the drill press. We use a step drill bit because this will be able to make the center hole better and it won't drift. <laughs> you can get these from Harbor Freight. You know, they're not dirt cheap, but they're not as expensive as the other stuff. And you can probably get them on Amazon. I'll find a link for those. Hold it down. Now we're gonna have to clean this. There's oil and crap in there. And the few threads that we do have, we want those to be nice and clean. Just gonna use a soapy towel. Just gonna try to clean everything. Wanna get in between. Obviously you could skip this step if you didn't use any oil when drilling, but I'm doing this because I want to make sure that we get our best chance of having a proper solder joint. Let me show you which part, what parts. Ah! Fuck me. All right guys, you got your main pipe and jury body. Now you need to put all the gas fittings together. So that's why you need yourself some gas tape, which is similar to Teflon tape, just a bit thicker than Teflon tape. Now these tighten righty tighty lefty loosey. So when you wrap the gas tape, you have to make it, you have to wrap it so it tightens around itself. So, so when you go to put this part in, as you are tightening it, it is tightening around itself. You wanna take your adjustable wrench Now that's one end, do the same thing for the other side. So now you have your valve assembly. Perpendicular to the gas flow is off, parallel is on. So we want this end to be where the Venturi end is. So now we're gonna take our swivel joint and this swivel joint just makes it so that you're able to connect two different gas fittings. Make this easier on ourselves. We're gonna take our small adjustable and hold our piece. And then we'll take our bigger adjustable and just tighten it. Uh, we just don't wanna kill it, but we wanna get it nice and tight. So now the swivel joint is towards the end of Venturi. So now we'll take our gas jet nozzle Venturi end. We're going to wrap these threads with gas tape, same thing. It turns righty tighty, so we're gonna make sure we wrap it so that as we twist, as we twist, the gas tape wraps around itself and tightens more. And it's all right if it's on thick, you just don't wanna cover the end. Now I'm gonna put it in back counterclockwise just to start the threads so we don't cross thread. So the thing with this swivel joint is we can see how we want it. So before we fully tighten that, we want it so that when we have this in the forge, it's lined up. We're gonna take our small wrench, our small croissant wrench. Croissant. And just gotta tighten it. And now we'll be ready to attach the, the gas line. I'm gonna hook up the Venturi burner to the stainless steel hose. If you look here, it has a rubber gasket, so we wanna make sure that there's nothing, no crap in there. We wanna make sure that that's in, because these ones, these hoses are great, but I've had these rubbers fall out, and then your forge get pregnant, and it's not a good time. Hand tight as we can get it. You get your adjustable wrench, and hold your Venturi burner. 
This is why having the valve where it is is nice because it gives you some leverage. Don't have to kill it, just has to be nice and tight. In order to test the, the joints of your new gas burner assembly, I recommend whether you have a spray bottle or not. I didn't have a spray bottle, so I'm gonna show you how to make a makeshift bubble tester. You're gonna get an empty water bottle, fill it with some decently warm water, put a decent amount of dish soap. You just want it to be fairly concentrated. Put the cap on, just give it a little mix. You don't wanna shake it up too much. Take a nail, find the center, poke a hole. As you can see right there, see how the soap is bubbling in the joint? It's leaking. Don't want to keep that on for too long because that can blow up the house if I do this. Just messing with you guys. But as you can see, it'll make bubbles where there's gas leaking. So that'll tell you that you need to tighten up your joint. Gonna tighten this back up. Take our soap solution, put it back on the swivel joint in the area. And we got no leaks. Now this burner should be a lot better. There we go. We just had a little clog from when we did the soldering. You guys can see, this is oxidized from the heat, probably warped. The new one that we'll be putting in was the exact same part. You can see this part that's been used for almost a year has expanded. So this end is a consumable. You may or may not be able to get it off. You might honestly just have to be able to get a new eight inch nipple and a new reducer. The new one, as you can see, is nice. Smaller diameter, it's gonna be a little bit loose fitting in the forge. For the new forge, because as you can see, this one is cracked up, but you can see it's worn out. It doesn't have a built-in holding area for your hot steel. So next video, build video, we'll be redoing this. And also this is sitting on my bolt together forge stand. I got a video, go check in the recommended up here or check down below. I'm just using some metal wire. Just hold it in place, keep it from falling out. Light the full, light the torch. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Congratulations on making it to the end. Now that you have yourself a completed the jury burner, the fine. You want to, yeah, fuck you. Now the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to build this bolt together forge with some upgrades compared to this model because I had to redo some designs. And I'll be showing you step by step, giving you how to build this forge, the pros, the cons, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. But what I overall do like about it is that it's something you can build, have a sense of pride saying, hey, I built that. And if anything breaks or goes wrong, you know exactly what parts to get, where to get them, and even have extra parts. So just say you have an order of railroad spike knives that you gotta make for the holidays. Something goes wrong, something breaks, you can just go hardware store, Amazon, online, buy the parts or already have the parts made, bought and ready to go, and then you'll be right back up and running. So again, thank you guys. This is something that we'll be working on and we'll have more videos this year on beginner knife making, tool reviews, and a bunch of other things. So make sure to stick around. Thank you guys, and keep forging on. And then turn the valve. Ah! Subscribe.